Moncrief on News Talk. Now, if it were a country, the US military would be the 55th largest emitter of greenhouse gases in the world. Yet at the recent COP26 conference, the military and international arms industry were barely mentioned. Joe Murray is coordinator of AFRI Action from Ireland and joins us now on News Talk. Good afternoon, Joe. Good afternoon, Sean. Are there specific ways that militaries are, are greenhouse gas emitters, apart from, I suppose, the obvious things, all the vehicles they would have, etc.? Yeah, the US military is the biggest single institutional user of petroleum. And that's before you mention the bombs that are dropped, the military aircraft, the many ways that the military war machine impact not just on people in in terms of death and destruction, but the destruction of our planet itself. And that's why it is utterly extraordinary that we had COP26, you know, uh, where our planet is in peril. And and the military dimension of climate change was not even mentioned. It is, as I say in the article in the examiner today, it is the elephant in the room that cannot be mentioned or cannot be touched, it would seem. Mm. Now, well, as a, <clears throat> excuse me, as appalling as bombs and, and um, widespread killing is, does that ne- does that contribute to climate change? Is, is well, that, isn't that a separate issue? It's not a separate issue at all. Can you imagine the damage that's been done by the chemicals that are used in bombs and in weapons? For example, depleted uranium, which is regularly used and which has devastated the landscape in Iraq and Afghanistan and elsewhere, and given people extraordinary levels of illness as well. So it is utterly destructive, both to planet and to people. And that's why it it is so obscene that at this juncture in human history that the Irish Department of Defense, the Irish government, is hosting a meeting in the Aviva Stadium to promote the making of weapons, like it's effectively an arms fair that's being promoted proudly just in the wake of COP26. It is absolutely unbelievable. Will they be actually selling arms at this event? No, they won't be selling arms. They will be bringing companies together to meet members of the European Defence Agency to tell them how to get the money to build weapons. And uh, there's a rumour now that this uh, meeting might be called off because of COVID. And I find that extraordinary that, you know, the captains of industry and the perpetrators of the weapon systems are not prepared to take the risk of getting COVID, but they are happy to make weapons that will visit death and destruction on some of the most vulnerable people throughout the world. Mm. I've worked in Sudan and I've traveled extensively in Africa and in Latin America. And the one thing that the world doesn't need more of is weapons or war. And it is an, an obscenity that our Department of Defence is promoting this. And the parties in government, Simon Coveney, is announced to open this so-called event, which is scandalous. And where are the Green Party? Where are the members of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael? I'm sure nobody, if you asked people on the street, do we need more weapons? Do we need to be involved in the weapons industry? The vast majority would say, not on your life. Mm. Well, it's billed as enterprise research and innovation in defence. So it's not really, it's kind of a woolly title. It's not exactly clear what it is. It's a woolly title, but the outcome will be the creation of weapons. That's what it's about. We are already in Ireland, we make components for weapon systems. Now we're moving up a gear. This is what I cannot understand at this juncture. And, and in Ireland, where we've had, some people would say 800 years of conflict. We've certainly had 30 years of conflict on the island. We know the consequences of war on weapons. We know it's damage to people and to planet. And to, and to be so foolish, to be so obtuse as to begin to promote this as part of our industrial policy is scandalous beyond words. Yeah. Though all countries will have a defence force of some sort, uh, might it be a good idea to fund research so we don't have to use weapons such as depleted uranium weapons that are doing such long-term damage? Well, I think, Sean, you know, we have schools that are in vast need of extra money. We have a health system that's crumbling. We have urgent needs in terms of what we need to do regarding climate change. 
The last thing at the bottom of the list of any requirement is the need for more weapons. Every night on the news, we see conflicts from all over the world. We see the effects of weapons in our own society in, in a smaller scale. So of all the things that we need, of all the things that our country should be promoting is the weapons industry. And it says it in our constitution that we are committed to the Pacific settlement of international disputes. The Good Friday Agreement, I read it again this morning, we reaffirm our total and absolute commitment to exclusively democratic and peaceful means of resolving differences on political issues and our opposition to any use or threat of force by others for any political purpose. This is a deal that the Irish government and the British government negotiated and signed up to. And now we're holding this so-called event in the Aviva Stadium to create weapons to kill people against whom, whom we don't know, but against whom we have no gripe or no grudge. Mm. And it is absolutely appalling. Well, we do have a military in Ireland, we, uh, and we have a long and proud history in, uh, in the Defence Forces of working on, on UN missions and keeping yeah. people safe. But they have to I, do that with guns, Joe. That's, that's kind of a reality. You, I agree with you, Sean. We have a great, we have a wonderful tradition going back as far as Frank Aiken. And I would advise people to look up Frank Aiken, and particularly our government ministers like Simon Coveney. Look at what he did. He was about disarmament and peacekeeping. And that's what we need. That's what our government should be doing. As a member of the security in the UN, that's what they should be promoting. But we're moving away from that. We're moving towards aggressive overseas military endeavors like we did in Afghanistan, for example. We were in Afghanistan. What were we doing there? But more so, and this is the point that I am so angry about, is the fact that we're moving into the weapons industry, into the creation of weapons, when it is the most damaging issue on the planet is war, and its repercussions. Joe, thanks for speaking with us today. Joe, I was Joe Murray, their coordinator of uh, AFRI Action from Ireland.